My name is Andrew Tarimo from Tanzania, working for the University, Supreme University of Agriculture, the only agricultural institution in Tanzania. And I am a full professor dealing with irrigation, and I've been doing this irrigation works for the last 38 years of my life. And uh, out of which 14 years were in government and 28 years in the university. Okay. Groundwater basically came into use for irrigation purposes in large states after the decentralization policy whereby the state farms were sold to private companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, when the private companies came into it, they expanded the land for irrigation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the surface water was no longer sufficient, so they started drilling and they equipped, of course they improved also the irrigation systems. Uh, I can set a few farms like the Tanganyika Planting Company in Moshi, which now they are getting about 2,000 hectares using groundwater, and the remaining 4,000 hectares they are using surface water. We have Kagera Sugar Company in the West Lake, they have about 8,000 hectares of land, they have improved that land, now they're using center pivot, and they have decided, actually they, implement, they have implemented at least 1,000 hectares using groundwater. For smallholder farmers, it's still something very new in the country that they've got to admit. But the irony is, whereas people may say, Tanzania have a lot of surface water more than any other sub-Saharan Africa, which is also true but the water is diminishing very fast and uh, most likely it's due to climate change. Rivers which used to be perennial in the last five, six years, now they are no longer perennial and therefore during dry season it has always been a problem. There have always been some rationing and uh, I can tell you both the irrigation policy of 2010 and uh, the water policy of 2002 have put a lot of emphasis on groundwater use, groundwater exploration. <coughs> and that's where really the goal of the government and the goal of the smallholder is. The only thing that we are lacking is we've got to educate our smallholder farmers. They, they would talk about groundwater, but they do not know exactly what is groundwater. And we need to put a lot of training to bring them, to create an awareness that they know exactly what is groundwater because some of them they just think it's a flowing river under the ground and they can tap it as much as they can. So we've got to bring them into a position whereby they understand the limitations with the groundwater. If you're dealing with unconfined aquifers, which is literally depends on the rains as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. raining at a particular place, recharging the, the aquifer, yes. and the rains have changed a lot. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did an analysis with my colleagues for the whole country, for 55 stations, rainfall stations, scattered yes. all over the country. And uh, we found that the length of the growing season in Tanzania has drastically been reduced. I see. Uh, most cases for two to three months. But the end of the rain season maintained it to be the same. So uh, if we are going to depend on a confined aquifer as a source of water, not necessarily for irrigation, even for domestic, for livestock, mm -hmm. we stand a chance still of the aquifer drying up during the dry season. I, I can say groundwater per se for the poor, the real small scale farmer, has not been put into use. We have a couple of urban dwellers, especially in Dar es Salaam and Dodoma, who have uh, their own boreholes. But uh, I would say most of those which I know, they're, they're not technically good boreholes. Most of those which I know, uh, they still lack a lot of scientific analysis for the water quality, the type of the aquifer they're dealing with, mm -hmm. the mineralogy of the aquifer, a lot of stuff is not known. Yeah. But 
they do use it for small uh, backyard garden. Yeah. The cost of drilling the well yes. is prohibitive. Mm -hmm. It's prohibitive to a small scale farmer. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, I, I guess this is all over the world. Mm -hmm. Farmers are very conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, unless they see something working with their two naked eyes, they are not going to put a penny in there. Uh, why should I say? I mean, I'm saying this because although we are dealing with small scale farmers, we have small scale farmers who can afford. Yeah. Talking from Tanzania's perspective, yes. I can tell you 20 years is too long. Uh, between now and another 10 years to come, especially in the plains, like the Usangu plains, the Rift Valley plains. We have no choice. We've got to go into groundwater. The only thing is we've got to build a capacity to these smallholders who are the backbone of the agricultural products in the country. You see, it's not a classroom education. It's to create an awareness that this is what's going to happen and to create a system whereby they can as well maintain the wells on their own. They can uh, have some kind of uh, banking system uh, whereby they can get their loans and things like that. And this banking system at village level in Tanzania is quite widespread now, so it's something that they know. It's just a question of mixing the two, that now we, we're moving from the surface water, we're moving from the marketing of the maize, and we're now getting to the marketing of the groundwater. <laughs> and uh, this is what we've got to do to, to, to be able to pay the loan, this, that kind of thing. So, so, really, uh, and again, you see, this issue of irrigation, sometimes it's we, the academician, it's we, uh, the, the scientists, who does just focus one dimension. And I will give an example which happened to me about hardly five years ago in the Usang Plains. I was in a very, very dry area, and I decided that we should create ponds and get irrigation water from canals during rain season, store the, the water into the ponds so that they can use that water to irrigate backyard vegetables during dry season as a source of food. Well, I constructed two good ponds. I had a small group of about 18 people, nine women and nine men. I went a year later and I found 120 pounds. I said, wow, it's great. The, now people have understood what I wanted. But I was deadly wrong. These people, they wanted that water to, to construct their houses during dry season. And they were marketing the water and they were getting a lot of money out of the water, selling it to other villages. So really, it depends on what priorities are.